Question number two. And see, I'm ruining some of this with my slides. I hate that. Because <clears throat> you're going to look at that slide and go, what is he talking about? You ready? How should we treat visitors? Okay. That was a question that was asked. How should we treat visitors? When, it first, when I first read the question, the first thing that popped in my mind is, we need to treat them like family. And then I got to thinking, how we treat family? And I said, no. No. Uh, we don't want to treat them like family sometimes. Okay? Guys, there's a long list of do's and don'ts when it comes to how we need to treat our visitors in this congregation. And I've got ten do's and I've got ten don'ts. Notice the ten do's. Number one, greet them immediately. Folks, as soon as a visitor walks into our midst, every one of us as children of God need to rush to that individual and greet that person. You know that? If there's 50 Christians here, they ought to get 50 handshakes. That's what they ought to get. If there's 100 Christians, they ought to get 100 handshakes. Folks, you and I ought to be looking for these individuals and run up to them and greet them. Notice secondly, express joy that they're here. You know, it is their choice that they walked into this building, isn't it? They made a conscious decision to come in here and be with us. And you and I ought to be elated that those individuals are in our presence. And we need to tell them that, oh, we're so glad you're here. We're elated, we're thankful that you're here. Notice the third one. Folks, get their name. When you walk up to them, tell them who you are, and then guess what? When, after you've told them they're glad, that you're glad they're here, say, what is your name? And listen. That's the hardest part, isn't it? Because they'll tell you their name, and guess what? You'll forget just like that. Best thing to do is take a piece of paper out and just write their first names down on a piece of paper so you don't forget. Because what you want to do is you want to get back to them at the end of the service, folks. And to call them by name, that's one thing that's going to impress them, is it not? Notice the next one. Ask some simple questions. Now when I say simple questions, I mean questions like this. Where do you live? Well, I live here in Jacksonville. Well, I live in Alabama. Well, I live in Alaska. Just ask them where they live. Where do you attend church services there? Folks, people love to talk about themselves, you know that. Why are you in town? Oh, we're here for the Kentucky game yesterday, whatever it might be. You see, you get to find out a few things about those individuals, what they're interested in. Get to know those people just a little bit. Ask them some questions. Notice the next one, explain our worship to them. Folks, our worship, especially in the mornings, is a little bit different than some congregations, isn't it? We come in here first for worship, then we go to Bible class. People need to know that. Oftentimes, they're very familiar with going to Bible class first. And so they're looking for classes. Explain to them what's going on. Come on in here. Let me set you down somewhere. Let me explain to you how we'll be conducting our services this morning. And just talk to them a little bit. Notice the next one. Give them some information about Oceanside. Folks, we've got packets out there that are called visitor's packets. Elizabeth makes those on a regular basis and they have a ton of wonderful information that individuals can have about the Oceanside congregation and about other things as well, especially if that person is not a member of the body of Christ. <clears throat> Notice the next one. Make them feel comfortable. Here, let me walk you inside. Introduce them to a couple of people and go with them until they sit down, folks. You just sit right here. This is normally where we sit, but you sit right here. Make them feel comfortable. Notice this next one. Meet their needs, folks. Sometimes there's individuals who come into our community and they're here because they're going to Mayo Clinic. Maybe they're going to have surgery. Folks, we need to meet their needs if we can. I'll be up there tomorrow and I'll visit with you. I'll sit with you through the surgery. They may be, you may be the only friend that they have in this community while they're going through that kind of a thing. And folks, you don't think they'll remember that? They'll remember it forever. Meet their needs. Notice the next one. Invite them back. We want you to come back to the Oceanside Congregation anytime you're in town. If you're across the street, we have services on Wednesday. We have Bible class. Come back and be with us again. And notice that last one. Follow-up visits. One of the hardest things that I've ever 
tried to convince congregations to do are follow-up visits. Did you know the most important thing for a visitor is to be visited within 48 hours after they've come to this congregation? One of the things that every church needs is what I refer to as a first responder visitation team. Folks, if we have three visitors here from this community, tomorrow night those three visitors need to have somebody on their door. We're glad you came to Oceanside. We want to invite you back. And what about our members who aren't here, folks? So oftentimes we let them go three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks. All of a sudden, we, you know, they've been gone about eight weeks. Where are they? That doesn't need to happen. Folks, we need to be visiting these individuals and getting these individuals to be a part of our congregation. Now watch this next one. There's some don'ts. Don't have filthy facilities. Oh, you ever gone into a nasty place? I don't like to go into a nasty restaurant, do you? Almost makes you just want to turn around and walk out. Folks, if they walk into this building and this building is nasty, guess what? It's going to make an impression on them. You don't think they're looking? They're looking at the carpet. Are the carpets clean? Do they have a bunch of stains on them? What about the pews? Are the pews clean? They sit down and they're looking at the windows. They, oh, what beautiful window. But look at all of those cobwebs up there in those windows. Those people are examining us. They're watching to see if we really care about our own facilities. Are we serious about what we're doing here at this building? If it's clean, if it's nice, guess what? Man, you should go in there. It's a quaint little building, but it is clean as a whistle. Don't have dirty facilities. Secondly, don't ignore them. Oh, well, if I could get everybody not to do that, we'd be wonderful, you know what? We have a tendency to come into this building, plop down in our little seat, and guess what? That's where we sit. God forbid anybody come in, I have to talk to them. Sometimes I wonder, why are you a Christian? Folks, you and I don't even need to get seated until all our visitors are seated. You know that? Now, if you have a medical difficulty, that's a different story, isn't it? But folks, we need to be up. We need to be looking. We need to be watching for these individuals. They've come into our midst by their own choice. And how we just ignore them? Not too long ago, Glenn said he visited a congregation up near Atlanta, and he walked in, and nobody said hardly anything to him. You're there for two hours and nobody says a word to you. Can you imagine that? Finally, I think a deacon or two spoke to him at the congregation. Folks, that's not the way it ought to be. Every member ought to be looking for those individuals. Notice also, don't judge somebody by their looks. We have a tendency to do that. Oh, look at that dude. What's he doing here? That old long hair. Look how he's dressed. Got them old shorts on. Folks, don't judge somebody by their looks. They're here, aren't they? They expressed at least that much interest in what we're doing. And we do not need to judge them by their looks. Teach them, yes. But judge them, no. Notice next. Don't fail to get their name. That's frustrating, isn't it? Not to know their name. They come back the next time and guess what? You have to ask them again, don't you? You know what impresses them? You get their name and you say it to them the next time. That's impressive. Takes a lot of work to do it, though, folks. You've got to stay focused on this stuff. Notice the next one. Don't be rude. There are some brethren who just have a tendency to be rude. Who are you? What are you doing here? They're probably just here because they want something. Oh, goodness, don't be rude. Be nice to folks. Notice the next one. Don't be too friendly. You know, there's some people that are just too friendly. You want to know how? Getting your boundaries, man. You know? It's almost as if they get almost in kissing distance of you. And you're just going, man, get back away from me just a little bit. Folks, don't get too friendly with the people. It's okay to be nice, shake their hand, but don't get too friendly. Notice the next one. Don't embarrass them. This was something that was interesting. There was a um, survey that was conducted, and they were asking individuals, what is the worst thing that happens to you as a visitor in a congregation? And they said, the church embarrasses me. And they said, well, how do they do that? Well, here I am, I'm visiting, and they call my name, and they want me to stand up so everybody can see me. Folks, that's not what a visitor wants. Visitors in your congregation, oh, let's just call on the visitor. 
There he is. Folks, you don't want to embarrass them. Okay? And it's easy to do if we're not careful. Notice the next one. This goes under rudeness, but I separate it because it happens all the time. Don't ever ask a visitor to move from your seat. I understand. You have made an impression for years there. And I understand that that seat is so comfortable. And I understand that you have put money in the collection plate and you've bought that place. But don't ask somebody to move. And guess what? That sounds funny. It happens all the time in churches. You know that? All the time. Huh. What are you doing in my chair? You need to move on down there. My wife and I sit here for the last 55 years. Folks, you've been sitting there too long. You need to make another impression. <laughs> and notice the last one. Don't ask personal questions. Are you married? Got children? Been divorced? Who does your hair? Folks, you'd be amazed at what some brethren will ask visitors at a congregation and automatically just turn them off. You know that? I will never go back to that church, they say. Not as long as that dude's there. Don't make visitors feel uncomfortable. Folks, keep your distance, keep your space, be nice, be kind, get their name, welcome them with joy and enthusiasm, make them comfortable when they come in through the doors. I was thinking about the Sermon on the Mount. Folks, there's several passages of Scripture that can apply to us as members in congregations when visitors come in. Be a light. Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Notice the second one. Don't judge those individuals. Judge not that ye be not judged. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. Folks, don't judge individuals. Not critically and harshly. What if one of these days you're out somewhere and you have to worship at a congregation and guess what you forgot? You forgot your suit. And all you've got is some old work clothes. Well, I guess I'll go to services. So there you go. Go in all the old work clothes. What if somebody else judges you harsh? Look at him, what's he doing here? That kind of stuff. I don't want to be judged like that, do you? Don't judge critically, folks. You're there, you're worshiping. And that's what matters. Notice also, Jesus said to practice the golden rule. All things whatsoever you would that men should do unto you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. How do you want to be treated when you go to a congregation? Treat those individuals exactly the way you want to be treated.